the San Pedro is very beautiful. It's unique, majestic. It's very atypical from a habitat standpoint. And there are so many different plant species and so many different animal species. I think a lot of people picture South Texas as prickly pear and mesquite, which in you know a lot of cases it may be, but I think that's what makes the San Pedro so beautiful in the fact that there's a lot of other ecological communities mixed in with your prickly pear. We're in South Texas, but uh, from the highest point on the ranch, you can see the Chihuahuan Desert. So we have this unique riparian habitat in a very dry area. Then we have some very deep open sand country. And then we have the, the gravel hills along the, near the Rio Grande. Really five very distinct areas of the ranch that are very different habitats. Oh, did you get it? Did he catch something? I think my grandfather saw a, a very good opportunity. Uh, he bought it, of course, 1932 was uh, some of the worst years of the Depression. And he had grown up ranching. He, had, he, was, he was a real cowboy. Your first memories of working on the ranch or being awakened at dawn and you're saddling up your horse and you're helping to round up, and those were some of my earliest memories and it didn't seem like a lot of fun at the time <laughs> but looking back you know I wouldn't trade it for anything the San Pedro is a working ranch Nine, nine, zero. the income that is generated is primarily through wildlife and cattle which we run a registered beef master uh, cattle herd here Cattle can be a, a, a real asset to an operation, even if you're managing for wildlife. It's all in how you apply them. And the San Pedro Ranch definitely uses them correctly. The brother and sister team works hard to benefit all wildlife and the people who make up the San Pedro Ranch. You know, Daniel Boone, who recently retired, uh, born and raised here, his father worked for my father for many years. And so we have a multi-generational uh, culture here. We each recognize what's important to the other about this ranch and respect that. For Pam, that's butterflies. For Joseph, it's quail. And the once caliche pit turned into a wetland hosts plenty of plants that benefit both species. This is Rio Grande uh, clammy weed, which is actually um, a pollinator plant, but also a really good quail plant. Quail don't eat butterflies, do they? No. Okay, okay, <laughs> just dawned on me. <laughs> but do quail eat butterflies? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to tell her that they did, so now that she knows from Chase that they do, the solution is plenty of butterflies. Along with increasing butterfly habitat are a host of other projects, from building a wetland planting native grasses over old pipelines, setting up artificial turkey roosts, and the restoration of a creek. So it's really interesting work, and uh, they're, they're really doing a great job in restoring their riparian areas. And finally, the addition of a conservation easement to make sure the ranch stays the way it is for future generations. The land doesn't know your intentions, and it doesn't know the laws, and it doesn't know the regulation. The land only knows the results, and, and if your results are good and move you towards a, a stable, diverse native habitat, then that's good. But uh, all the intentions in the world won't make that happen. It, it requires active management. That's in a nutshell, our philosophy.